Well, welcome, 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 everybody. I so appreciate everybody joining on. If you have never met me before, my name is Piper Harris, and I am the coach and CEO of Poema Women's Success Coaching. So I have been doing this Caring Through COVID series. I think this is my seventh or eighth week. I can't remember. Uh, but part of the Caring Through COVID series is I also have a lunch and learn. And why I'm doing that is I just want to give us something to think about, to explore, to add some tips and tools to our personal and professional lives and get our minds out of this muck and mire of what we're faced with with this pandemic. Uh, so that is this, this COVID series. So today I am uh, joined by the lovely Ashley Velez. Um, so before we get into introductions on all that, I do want to let you know how today is going to operate. So it's going to be about an hour discussion, uh, and all of this is going to be recorded. We'll, of course, drop this in uh, YouTube, anything for you all if you want to go back and listen. Um, we will be utilizing the chat box and allowing you to ask questions at the end. Again, that's the coach in me. Uh, and um, so please make sure that you're, you remain muted. I believe I have that set. Also, make sure you stay to the end. Ashley and I worked really hard and a beautiful workbook for you all, for people getting started in digital marketing, SEO, all that crazy stuff. So make sure you stay to the end. We will drop that link for you and we'll also drop this on Facebook. Okay. So we're all ready for that. So Ashley, so excited to have you here today. Thank you. Yay. So Ashley, you're the co-founder and COO of Atlanta SEO Pro, mm -hmm. which is a full service digital marketing agency. And you specialize in websites, SEO, content creation, social media management for small businesses. I mean, the whole gamut, right? So you have experience working in, with agencies and in-house marketing departments. Uh, you're passionate about working with local businesses, obviously, Woodstock. Um, and as an owner of a small agency, you love sharing and value sharing um, ideas and experiences with your clients. You're super passionate about creating, building, and implementing innovative approaches to people, culture, engagement, all of that, building community. And you, like I said, you're a Woodstock girl and you live there with your husband and two boys. So welcome, welcome. Thanks Thank for coming you so much, friend. So I am really excited about digging into this, not only because um, I want to empower women into heightened leadership and obviously digitizing ourselves, period, is right. something we have to do, especially in the midst of COVID. And it was really interesting. I had read an article by Rita McGrath a um, couple weeks ago no. Yeah. I mean, a while ago, I can't remember on um, Harvard Business Re Review, and she was talking about the necessity of digital transformation. And then bam, we are thrust into COVID. Right. I mean, it's just, it's wild to think about. And so what was interesting about this, this conversation or this article she wrote, and I wanted to have a quick conversation with you about this, is that there is a necessity absolutely to digitally transform. And obviously that's tr absolutely apparent right now. And it's interesting, I'm sure you're seeing it, we're seeing the businesses that were preparing for something like this, and then we're also seeing those that weren't. So we're right. seeing those that have transitioned, those are not transitioning or cannot transition, like our personal services. Right. Um, and what I loved about the article is that digital transformation doesn't have to break the bank at all, that you can make this digital footprint, grow your business with minimal loss. And so I thought that was really great. What do you want to add to that? Because I really think that it, it, it's huge right now. Everybody is, how do I do this? How do I get on online? How do I sell my product service X, Y, Z? So I'd love to hear what you think about that. Um, one of the best things to do and absolutely free is creating video content on Facebook. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, get on Facebook, do a live. If you're not comfortable doing a live, you know, create a 30 second video minute long yeah. to talk about what you guys are doing, you know, what your yeah. business is doing, um, what changes that you're making, yeah. um, you know, because uh, graphic content is, is great, but, okay. uh, but video content gets far more engagement than, than any one graphic. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's free. And you know, and if you go live or, or something like that, I mean, that, that stays on your business page or on your, um, your, your personal Facebook account or something like that. That's yeah. just one. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the, the social media platforms, I mean, you don't pay unless you, you advertise. So right. all of those things are, are free yeah. and you can post content there. 
um, you know, as often as, as you feel comfortable. So. so with that, I mean, utilizing those free platforms like Facebook, video content and all that, what would you say to a business that's never really thought about digitally transforming? How would they transition into, I mean, if they're used to person to person, brick and mortar, and they're going, Ashley, you just told me to go on video. I don't know how to do that. What would you say to them? Like, yeah, I know this is scary, but. <laughs> uh, I know this is scary, but face the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, we, one of the things that we have learned certainly in the last couple of weeks or months rather, yeah. um, is, is the power of authenticity really, oh, yeah. truly just going online and sharing what you do, what you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You could do it with your iPhone or your Android phone or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, but just this power of authenticity creates amazing connection. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It just, it was really, really interesting before I had you booked um, today, I had read this article. I'm like, we got to talk about this, you know, and then we're thrust into this with COVID. So yeah. I just thought this, and it's a fascinating article. I can share it with everybody if you'd like to read the article. Oh, please do. So I would love she's, to read it. she's really amazing. She actually came up with a digitally transforming system in the nineties. Um, kind of a lean approach. And so it's, it's really a cool um, article. So I'll make sure to share that. So I am thrilled to have you today because as a small business owner, I have had to learn digital marketing on my own. I didn't have you. <laughs> so it was like Google, <laughs> how do I do this? Yeah. And um, what's interesting is that um, obviously with the climate, we need to navigate this quickly right now. Everybody needs to do that. But also I made enormous costly mistakes in the beginning when it came to me trying to do this digital marketing thing. So with that in mind, what would you say are your top three mistakes that people make when they step into their own digital marketing? Um, I would say first things first, um, uh, a lot of people have a website now, but mm -hmm. many of them have an underperforming website. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty well known that, you know, having a website is a crucial piece of your, your online presence. Yeah. Um, mobile is 58% of search now and your business needs a mobile friendly website for consumers okay. who navigate around easily. Um, your site needs to be visually appealing. Um, it needs to have a user experience that, you know, how easy is it to find the important pieces of information, you know, okay. on your site? Where's your contact form? Where's your about us? Um, if you're a restaurant, is your menu there? Um, you would be amazed. <laughs> and, really? Uh, you know, the, yes. The websites that we've seen, um, you know, where the information is not readily available. Okay. Um, okay. So I would say first, first and foremost, having not having a website or having an underperforming website. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, so before you move on, let me ask you, the big thing I've heard now is have a one page website. What do you think about that? It's a uh, new thing that I'm seeing all these people put out there. Oh, you need just one page. And I think, what are they going to learn in one page? I think I, I can see how that would be effective for, for certain industries. Um, but any industry where, um, you know, there, there's, there's more information. Mm, I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a new trend I'm starting to see. And I think mm, for myself, well, because, I, uh... because you know, with multiple, with multiple pages, you have more opportunities for SEO with a one page oh. site. You have one page of SEO. Um, okay. so I mean, if that's all you need, then okay, maybe, maybe that works for you. But, okay. um, but ideally I would say you, you want multiple pages so that you can, you know, put SEO on each page and you okay. can, um, you know, utilize that. So. Okay. So driving more, more, more traffic because of multiple exactly. pages. Perfect. Okay. Yep. So number two, what's your second mistake that you see people make? Uh, I would say not adding new content to your website. Okay. Um, so in order for your website to continue to get crawled by search engines like Google and Bing, you must create new content. Um, we personally recommend uh, a minimum of two new pieces of content on your site a month, whether okay. that's um, a blog post or a new optimized landing page. Um, actually, I pulled a, I pulled, um, a statistic from Marketing Profs, um, which is, is a great resource if you're not already following them. 72% of marketers worldwide said that relevant content creation was the most effective SEO tactic. 
So that's really, yes. So when you talk about content, mm -hmm. does it count if I just add a new like link to say my podcast, does that count or not? Um, I would create a new page. So okay. I would create an actual new either landing page or a, or a blog post page on your site. Oh, and post it to so not a scrolling feed on the same page, mm. additional pages. No, I mean, it, it would help. It would boost it a little bit, creating okay. something on the same page or changing something up like that. But I would say more adding a, a full new piece okay. is, is, is a better, um, is a better use for that. And Great. then, um, so because of that, uh, so new content on your site tells the search engines, Google, Bing, um, Safari, that you're creating relevant content for your customers and thus mm. helps you rank better. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so five or 10 years ago, blogging was, was extremely important. Um, you know, many years ago when um, my business partner, James and I were um, working with a different agency, we would blog once a week. Yeah. Um, it's still important, um, but it's not as important um, you know, for Google. So the key is to okay. write new pieces of content that are both digestible for human eyes, but also pleasing to Google. Okay. You know, it's interesting that you bring up blogging way back in the day when I first ventured into being an entrepreneur, I had a blog and I wanted to pull out my hair because it was at least one a week. It was when I was chefing and trying to break in as, you know, being this master chef. And so I had this blog and man, it was just like, and it was long form, right? It's not these blogs that you read now that you can read in three to five minutes. It was just this right. long thing. And now it's so funny when I see people that share recipes, it's like this long blog. And then the recipe at the end, I'm like, oh, this is so annoying. How did I do this to people? <laughs> you know, I need quick digestible content, you know? You know, so yes. the blogging has changed tremendously in the yes. last 10 years. I mean, it's, yes. it's a big change. So what's, what's a third mistake that we make when we jump into digitally transforming our businesses? I would say publishing content to the wrong platforms. Oh, um, we see a lot of small business owners trying to force a social channel that isn't working <laughs> for them. Um, yeah. So you've got to weigh the insights and analytics of a, of, of a particular channel to see okay. if it's worth your efforts to even post there. It's all about knowing your audience and knowing where they are. If you're looking for more professional clients, Instagram or Snapchat may not be the best <laughs> platform to start. You may want to focus your efforts on, say, Facebook or LinkedIn. Yep. Um, but if your audience is Gen Z, by all means, attempt TikTok. So, yep. Yep. <laughs> you, know, you, you just have to know, and that's really digging in and, and learning who your audience is. And so much of that, too, is um, we find that when we're doing this background analyses for uh for some, for some of our new clients, mm -hmm. their idea of who their audience is and their actual audience, audience yeah. is often different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's funny because uh, the other day, my sons, I don't allow them to have social media, but we were mm -hmm. having discussions because of course all their friends do. I'm just the mean mm -hmm. mom. I'm like, you turn 18, oh. get out of my house, then you can have it. <laughs> Um, but all that to be said, we were talking about the TikToks cause they saw their aunt do one. And, and I was like, well, I can do something like that. And they both looked at me like cross. I said, mom, you're way too old for that. And right then I thought, you know what? That's not my audience. I do not belong on that platform, <laughs> you know, but it was so funny. The boys are like, no, mom. No. You're too old for TikTok. <laughs> so, well, those are great. Those are great to know that those can be major stumbling blocks for anybody that's really working to, to learn to grow themselves digitally. So th that's great. And I agree 100% having been learning this on my own, I made all of those mistakes, every single one of them. So, so tell me about SEO. You've said that a couple of times. So what is it? How does it work? And why is it important? SEO stands for search engine optimization, okay. and it strengthens a website's content and keywords to rank in search engines like, like I said, Google, Safari, and Bing. Okay. It is how your ideal customers find your site, and it drives clicks and results, and it is a long-term process that requires usually a customized strategy unique to each business and its needs. Okay. So um, there are both 
on-page and off-page um, types of SEO. Mm -hmm. On-page SEO would be using links out to other resources, using keywords in your blog content or your landing page content. And um, off-page SEO is often um, things like titles, descriptions, keywords, meta tag info. You might see that sometimes when you're, yeah. you're putting new information in and it might be confusing and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know what these things are. It's really um, any good SEO will tell you, you know, okay, this is what needs to go here in your title. This is what needs to go in your description. Okay. Um, the title is what you guys will see if you're searching for, you know, HVAC company in Woodstock, that's okay. the title. So ideally that should be best HVAC company in Woodstock or something uh, similar. Okay. The description would be what you see that short blurb that pulls up in your search engine after that. So, okay. um, and then so on and so forth. Whatever so, the descriptor is. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. I've seen that made it meta tag all that. And it's completely Greek to me. I'm like, ah, I'm just going to do the basics because I just, I don't get it. I don't have the bandwidth to figure it out. Sure. Sure. And, yeah. and that's, I mean, that's a lot of our clients. And so, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so with the, the SEO, it's, it's optimizing search engines. Um, mm -hmm. So if I'm a brand new business starting out, um, how do they find their keywords? How do they, you know, I think that's a lot of those basic questions. Like, how do I even get there? What would you say right. to them? I would say Google people that Google um, individuals or companies that you want to be like. Okay. Find out what their keywords are. Um, so again, if you're an HVAC company, go to reliable. If okay. you know how to do it, Go to Reliable Heating and Air and look and see what their titles are, what their descriptions are. How are they getting to the top of the search engines? Okay. Um, you know, don't blatantly copy, but get yeah. some ideas and see, you know, what words are they using? Um, you know, a lot of people don't know to use the, the long tail keyword phrase near me. So HVAC company near me. Putting that in your meta information is, is, is huge. Okay. Um, so things like that, research, 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 and don't just do it in your own localized area. So okay. again, if you're trying to go after Canton or Holly Springs or Woodstock or somewhere, do it in bigger cities mm -hmm. or, um, different States. So you can get a really good idea of, again, who's showing up okay. in those areas and, and what keywords they're using and, and just kind of pull from those strategies. So much of what we do, so much of SEO is, um, research. Okay. You have to be a really good researcher. So with you saying that, you know, I'm thinking about someone like me where I coach nationally and internationally. So right. what would my keywords, because I have done this and online coach is ridiculous. That, I right. mean, I know that's a key word, but it's not, it, it's too bland, I guess you could say too generalized. So what would you say to someone that is actually outside of their local market? Um, I would say you would definitely want to do uh, bigger keyword search strategies, bigger tools, um, see if there are any other women or organizations doing what you do, uh -huh. um, and then kind of use that same strategy gotcha. to work from there. Okay. Um, and, and, and really, it's, it's more, it's just, it's research. It's yeah. trying to figure out how people find you, you know, how your customers okay. find you, um, and then combining that information with, um, you know, things using Google trends and, um, which will tell you keywords that are similar to the words that you're typing in oh, okay. and things like that. So, okay. That's great. That's great to know. Yeah. Cause I've always wondered that just because yes, I, I'm local, but I like being able to work all of over course. the world, you know? So how do right. you optimize SEO doing that? That's great. So I, what I love about having you on is that I know amazing, beautiful women like you that are broken into business and that is near and dear to my heart. So as a mom, as a businesswoman, how did optimizing your digital marketing help you balance Cause it's hard. It's hard being business owner, mom, wife. I mean, all the, the hats we have to wear. So how has that helped you balance personal and professional? Tell me a little bit about that. I would say, um, in our busiest days, um, cause I also carry a client load in addition to being, um, COO, 
I, I schedule out my content for my clients uh, for the week over the weekend, uh, which allows me more flexibility during the week to plan out my schedule for meetings and networking events. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very fortunate that my business mentor, now partner, James Ball, had encouraged me to keep up my digital presence years and years ago, even as I grew my family. Um, because, and, and I'm so grateful because the hard work that I put in over the years boosts my own digital footprint and online brand, especially during the times when my personal life kind of <laughs> overflows and I'm unable to post new content as regularly as I'd like. Okay. So, um, just having those years of, um, you know, of doing it, um, okay. I too, I've had a blog since 2007. Yeah. Um, and at first before I had children, I posted in it very regularly almost daily. It was more of a, I'm um, going to age myself, a live journal, if you will. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but, um, but it really turned into more of a place for me to share my, 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 my personal goals, my professional goals and things like that, where I've really chronicled um, so much of, of my life. And um, so really just having that and then now being able to share, you know, the pieces that I write locally in local publications, I reshare those there. And, um, and it just, it just helps boost that, like I said, that digital footprint, yeah. um, even on days where I don't have it in me to. <laughs> I love hearing that though, because basically you're saying, yes, this is the long game, but keep it up because it yep. will reap the benefits and the rewards that you need when life gets crazy, when you're thrown a crisis like this, or just regular yep. life. And that's great to hear. Marathon, it, 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 right. Yes. yes it, it is hard work and it does take time, but it's worth it. You'll, you'll reap the reward. And I love hearing that you have the support of your mentor, your, your business partner now, your family, because I think that's a lot of women that bust out into business. Um, this is not a lone sure. sport. <laughs> I mean, boy, I tell you, uh, breaking into business is not for the weak of heart, number one, and it is not to be done alone. You have to have that team, those allies to, to help you because it, it's hard. It's, it's really hard. It's so hard. It's, hard. it's so hard. I mean, there's days I said the other day, I said, I haven't even changed out of my nasty PJs. I don't have time. You know, it's just, it's a hard, it's a hard bit. Am I wearing flannel pajama bottoms or That's am I the, Right. Wow. Right. Business on top, leisure wear on the bottom. <laughs> That's a great thing about this pandemic. I tell you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so what about social media? You've been talking a little bit about definitely make sure you're choosing the right platform, but does it honestly really have that big of an impact on us growing our business and why? Why do you say it does if, or does Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yes. Um, I would say both personally and for your, your small business. So whether it, if you're an individual or you're, you know, you're, you're looking to, to boost your small business, social media is an effective tool mm -hmm. to build a strong community online. And I have found this to be uh, particularly true over the last couple of months without the ability to see people in person at networking yeah. events. I mean, I used to go to um, the events at, um, you know, uh, Fresh Start Cherokee, the, mm -hmm. the One Million Cups and things like that, things that have all shifted to, yeah. to virtual networking events. Um, and seeking out the right channels for you, again, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, or others, um, and really diving in and interacting with people, both as yourself and as your business, can grow your reputation exponentially if done in a thoughtful, authentic way. Yeah, yeah. It's funny that you bring up the networking because that's how we met. Yes, uh, that's right. But I am actually thrilled that it's virtual networking <laughs> because... I, I have a hard time at networking events. It's one of those things. It was one of my, my courageous things that I had to do this year is to lean into these personal events. And so I actually love that it's virtual now. Is that terrible? Because <laughs> it just makes me nervous. I mean, talk about sweaty palms when I walk into a room of people I don't know. Um, yeah. But, but I do love what you're talking about is, is showing up authentically. Um, and even when you go into an in-person event, I try to be as much me, even though I'm nervous, um, sure. but being authentic in driving that community, um, boy, that, that's, there's something to be said about that, especially right now when we're stuck. We're stuck inside. So forging those relationships are so important online. What I have seen, what I will say, what I have seen with this pandemic is, I think, people going about it the wrong way. I have gotten blasted, like my email box in like LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram, and hey, it's so great, I love your content. By the way, if you spend $50,000 with me, 
Right. And it's just this icky feeling that yeah. they're, they're, they're using it that way. I mean, are, are you seeing that on your end as well? Some, yeah. And I would say LinkedIn, LinkedIn has been a, um, a not super great example of that. And then also email, some email marketing and stuff, but thankfully, mm -hmm. um, you know, more locally, um, I, I don't get a feel for that at mm -mm. all. Um, yeah. so, I mean, um, I would actually put a shout out to, um, you know, Pi Bar, yeah. Lauren Bolden, Pi Bar, her, if you're not already on her email newsletter, do. do I got on do. after I watched y'all. I, I oh, signed good. up anyway. Yeah. Good. Yeah. She just, she has this way of creating content that, um, that exactly as I said is, is authentic and it makes you want pie. So, right. right. Exactly. And I loved what she said. She's like, most people, you know, I think would, I wouldn't be busy. She's like, but I'm the busiest I've been. And I laughed so hard. I was like, yeah, because all of us are just wearing our big pants and yeah. we're not worried about wearing our business clothes. So heck yeah, I'm going to the pie bar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I loved when she said that. So speaking on the do's and don'ts of social media, especially what, with what we're talking about, what are some that we should specifically avoid right, you know, right now, but in general, what should we avoid? I would say don't solely rely on automation. Um, okay. you, you do want to schedule content out to free up your schedule um, using, you know, Buffer or Hootsuite or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea to also keep your eyes open for content from other sources yeah. that you can reshare. Um, it's a best practice. Share information that's helpful to your audience, even if you didn't create it. It's yeah. like good online karma. Yeah. Um, also take advantage of your social posts with links back to your site. The whole goal of posting to your social channels is, is twofold. You get more likes and you also guide customers back to your site. Yeah. If you're not guiding your customers um, back in, in some way, it's not a guarantee that they'll find your URL and, yeah. and go looking for content on your site uh, on their own. You have to guide them. They have to be guided <laughs> okay, sometimes but with that times. yeah but with <laughs> that you hear the things like you're not supposed to put a link within a post because it because of the algorithms and so what what do you do with that just ignore it uh, we haven't found that that hinders a post engagement in any really? way okay. putting a link in there no okay um and actually I would add to um you know make sure you add visuals images and, and short videos to okay. those do those posts. Um, you know, putting a link out with some text. I mean, the way that people scroll, I mean, they're going to, they're going to scroll right through it unless there's something visually appealing in the post as well. So, okay. Okay. So really capture the eye mm -hmm. before the reader. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. So, so tell me about, I, I, I told you, I was going to put you in the hot seat. I want to know, I said, I want you to tell people your expert opinion. What am I doing well? What am I not doing well? And hopefully people, so give it to me. I want to hear all of it. <laughs> okay. Um, well, first, you are doing an amazing job of staying consistent with your newsletters and your social media posts. I am very impressed. Thank you. Um, especially considering that I'm connected to you online and I know that currently you're also juggling work from home life with kids and teaching schedules yeah. and, you know, so just, just add teacher onto my resume. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> Not what I wanted on my resume, but it's there now. <laughs> it's there now. Um, and your branding is also consistent. Okay. The colors, the fonts, the imagery are all easily recognizable across your platforms, which is important. We've awesome. seen that, um, you know, with, uh, you know, talking to, to new potential clients, it's, it's a big mess. You've yeah. got some colors here, you've got other colors here, you've got some fonts here, but yours is, 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 like I said, it's easily recognizable. That's great. Um, I also love that you have so many free offerings. I mean, you are, you are giving away good, amazing content, which, which is, is, is huge. Yeah. So, um, oh, that's great to hear. You know, it's, it, it's, it's helpful for me to hear that because I actually transitioned my entire brand, uh, about in January, the beginning of right? the year, January. And I was yes. scared because everybody associated me with my red sneakers because that's what right. I wear. And that's every, I mean, I would get stopped in the grocery store. I'm like, whoo, people would send me pictures of t-shirts with red sneakers. And I was very concerned about transitioning my brand. Am I going to be 
recognized. And it was a scary transition. So it makes me feel good to hear that because I'm always, I w- I'm still very nervous. My heart says, yes, do this, but you just don't know what people think in the digital world. world. You know, I right. just don't know what people right. think. All right. So you've been really sweet. Now tell me the down and dirty. Where am I lacking? I would say when you're ready, one of the biggest suggestions I would make is moving your website from Wix to WordPress. Yeah. Um, self-built platforms like Wix and Squarespace, while the resulting sites can be beautiful, they do not lend themselves to solid SEO. Yeah. It's just, it's just not built in how the, those website builders are set up. And um, I hate that you said that. I used to do WordPress. I had oh, really? hard, yes, way back in the day. And I had such a hard time. And you're right, like Wix is easy because I have the bandwidth. Yeah. I want to focus on my clients. I want to focus on what my passion is. So I did do the Wix. But you're absolutely right. I do the basic SEO in there because otherwise I have no clue what I'm doing and I'm going to mess up the whole site. Um, so I agree. And I hate that you're saying that because I know you're right. <laughs> But, but I would say too, that, um, one of the, one of the best, um, our, our favorite plugin for SEO for, uh, for WordPress is called all in one SEO. Oh. And, um, it's just, it's easy to use. Okay. And again, you can see that the titles, descriptions to keywords for, for all of your pages, all of your, your blog posts. Okay. Um, and it just, it really, it really works well, um, with, that's WordPress. good to know because I haven't done WordPress in probably six years. So I'm sure it's a lot more user friendly these days, but when it really I used is. it, I was going to just pull all my hair out. It was so fun. <laughs> and again, it's, that's not my passion, right? It's like, why am I spending all my time on this? And I'm sure there's a lot of people in business saying, why do I have to do this when my passion is this over here? I don't want to spend it here. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But like you said, it's, it's a marathon. You got to stick with it. All right. So what else, what other suggestions do you give me on fixing, fixing stuff? I would, I really just have one other small suggestion okay. and I would say, um, and uh, making sure that you're tagging people with the at, sign yeah. you're sharing your amazing content um people organizations um you know you've, you've spent so much time creating these posts you want to make sure that that people are actually seeing them okay. and a lot of time with the onslaught of online content available people may miss that if you've tagged them um or, or they may they may miss it unless you've tagged them okay. they won't get the notification otherwise um, so just okay. making sure that, you know, people know, oh, hey, wow, Hyper has tagged me in this amazing post. Okay. Um, but really, I mean, otherwise, I would say, like I said, you're, 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 you're consistent, you're Good. branding, you, you're offering all of these amazing free tools. I mean, so. So yeah. with the tagging people, that is something I've always been worried about. So mm-hmm. I'll write a post, but then I feel almost like dirty tagging someone because obviously I'm not tagging. I, I, am I tagging them just to get more views from them? You know what I mean? Like I almost feel kind of dirty doing it. Is that weird for me? I, <laughs> um, no, I don't think it's weird, but it, it's, it's so, um, it's so expected now. I think okay. that you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel that way. Okay. Um, I think it's really more of a, of an alert thing now than it is, uh, Ooh, I'm going to tag everybody I know. Um, right. Yeah. I don't want to be that one. Cause you see those where it's like 25 people are tagged. <laughs> like, why was I tagged in this? But, um, but no, I mean, if, you, if you're resharing somebody else's content okay. or, you know, going forward, if you're announcing more of these awesome lunch and learns, you know, tag the individual, tag the business, um, so that they know they get that notification mm-hmm. and then they can share it on their own channels. It's just more of an impetus to, um, you know, again, give them that alert so that they can pay okay. it forward. So consistency with everybody needs to know consistency with posting colors, fonts, all of that. If you can <laughs> go to a better website <laughs> and, and then like you said, tagging people, it, the more, the better, the more, the merrier. Yep. Perfect. I love to hear that. That's great. Okay. You did good. Hey, I sweated a little bit, but I think, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. This is good. This is good. (laughs) 
I love it. So, you know, it's fun talking to you because as a coach, so I do leadership coaching, whether that's personal or professionally. And so some, a lot of my small business clients come to me and what I love about our relationship is now I can say, Hey, go to Ashley. Cause I don't have all the answers. Um, it's fun because a lot of what we're talking about, I try to encourage in my clients as well, you know, but the SEO, all of this is uh, foreign is absolutely foreign to me. Um, but we do, we develop a business plan and obviously digital marketing, it, it's going to be a part of that. It has to be, it has to be. Yeah. Um, and what I loved about what you said, and it's something I talk with my clients and I've had to work through myself is who's your customer, who's your client. Mm -hmm. You can't assume, or you can't tell yourself, no, this is who I want them to be. And then you pull your analytics up and you're like, wow, I'm only talking to 65 year old women that watch, you know, reruns of Oprah. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like, I was completely off on who my client base is, you know? Um, so I love that, you know, we've talked about that because it's so important to know who we are, what mm -hmm. our why is, what we're doing, um, who our client is. And then obviously digging into the fun stuff like the taglines, the mantras, the colors. It's just so much fun. I love yeah. doing that with my clients. Love doing that with my clients. So, well, so when uh, we are launching businesses and I want to talk to you about that, especially as a woman in business and myself, what would you say are your top like one to two things to um, do in launching a, your best approach to launching a business? One to two insights you can give a woman or men that are watching. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so one or two best approaches. approaches just to launch. Yeah. What would you say to them? How would you encourage that? Gosh, one would just be, um, to face the fear and do it. Yeah. Um, I, I stepped out of a, a full-time digital marketing role to yeah. do this. It was very scary. Um, but I knew that I wanted to get, be back in a position where I wanted to help small business owners again. Um, because that's what I was passionate about. Yeah. And, and I do feel that there is some, there's, there's a tiny little asterisk, um, because I've seen so much of, you know, uh, mantras and, and, and memes and quotes and things online where it's, you know, do, uh, do what you love and the money will come sometimes. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> sometimes. Have yeah. A plan. Yeah. Um, so yes, I would say absolutely. The passion there is, is, uh, is huge, but, um, you know, is there, is there a need for, for what you're doing? As I well? love that. So yes. The need that they're both there the yeah. passion and the need is there. Yeah. Um, and then two goodness gracious, uh, having a support system, yeah. having, having a support system, finding a support system. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that, I mean, I did, thankfully. I, I mean, I do. Um, I have been on a couple of amazing retreats with a um, writer, yoga instructor, workshop leader, Jen Pasteloff, mm -hmm. and um, and she's she's been an amazing help, just mentor person. You know, uh, I got you is is her yes. is her catchphrase, which I actually, you know. I have I, I have my, that. my I got you, um, but but just having a tribe. Yep. Um, yep. you know, women, men, you know, mixed, whatever, whoever it is, having a community, having a tribe, um, so that you can kind of have each other's backs Absolutely. So, and, and talk about, you know, well, this is what went great today. Well, this is what kind of sucked today. Um, and, and, and having someone there to help you through the days that kind of sucked and offering, um, suggestions. So. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And I absolutely, I absolutely concur with you. Um, especially with, um, the pain point you have to, because I do have a passion, mm -hmm. but, um, a passion can only get you so far. You right. know, I had a passion for cooking. Do you see me as a star on a cooking show? No, you <laughs> do not. <laughs> you know, it was a passion, but it didn't quite work out. I needed more of a plan and what's that pain point or what can I deliver? You know, right. um, is right. definitely huge. And of course, having the support, I would even add to that, not only just our community, our family, but there's so many resources that women are not aware of um, yeah. that can empower women, especially in small business. I mean, the SBA has 
a wonderful program, well, pre-COVID that they were doing free webinars to help women. How do I manage finances? How do I manage, you know, um, irate customers? It was the SBA really put the, their back into empowering women, which was amazing. And obviously our local chambers, um, any of those, you know, we can find support. But I think with women that are breaking into business, don't like, don't be afraid. It, I mean, you're going to be afraid. I shouldn't say don't be afraid feel the fear because right. the great thing about fear those emotions that physiological response is the same response you get from joy it's the right. same it's the same response so if you can just reframe it like what i'm feeling right now is excitement not fear not just you know what i mean so trying to reframe it and just lean into it because here's the thing you're going to fail right as a yep. business owner you're gonna yep. fail i mean there's it, it just happens and, you and just that was it. the scariest part yes being okay with that yes or finding a way to attempt to be yes <laughs> okay there's that. a lot of wine drank and a lot of tears shed however i got through those failures <laughs> well this has been so amazing and i know today that you have five core tips that you really want to share with people on how to practice growing their digital marketing so why don't you share those with everyone now cool okay um so step one, some of these things we've kind of gone over a little bit yeah. as, as we've been talking, but I would say step one, focus on being of value. Yeah. Set yourself apart from your competitors during this time by focusing on remaining relevant and being of value rather than selling. Why? Because people do business with other people they like, know, and trust. Yeah. The trust factor is especially key right now. Um, finances have been cut for many individuals and businesses, but still sharing your knowledge and remaining relevant now will help keep your personal brand or business top of mind so that when these customers do have financial resources, you're the first and only person they think of when they're ready to do business. Absolutely. So 100%. that's step one. Focus yep. on being a value. Um, step two, bring that value through content. Okay. Um, again, the best way to bring values to your customers is through content. Share your knowledge through blogs and landing pages, email newsletters, videos, and social media posts. Okay. Um, if you um, see other content that's helpful to your customers, even if you didn't write it, share it. This okay. is how an online community is built around your brand. Share a link or a post and make sure that you tag the original <laughs> source so that they know that you did. Um, and they too will remember that you shared their information and may return the kindness with a video or a piece of content of yours in the future. Yeah. So yeah. bring that value through content is uh, step two. Okay. Step three, optimize your content with SEO. So again, all this great content that you're writing and creating for your brand, make sure that you're optimizing it on your site. Okay. Use page, blog titles, descriptions, and keywords to help your customers find your content easily. Um, utilizing tools like Google Analytics and Google Trends help you learn more about what your customers are asking and using those same keywords in the content that you create both on your site and on your social media channels. Gotcha. Um, step four, stay consistent with social content. Yeah. Um, it's important to post content regularly on your social channels. Most people already know that. Um, and then again, to maximize your time, I would say do it with a scheduling platform like Buffer, Later, or yeah. Hootsuite or something else. Um, many of those have free plans that can help you schedule out your content each week to help free up your time to focus on other aspects of your business. And if you're starting from scratch, I would say opt for at least two to three times a week and go okay. from there. What's um, too much? Let me ask you that before you keep going. What's too much? Because you hear that sometimes. What's too much posting? I think it depends. It depends on the industry. It depends on the brand. Okay. Um, but I would say more than twice a day, unless you have, you know, something very specific, you have a, um, a special event or something like that going on. Mm -hmm. um, I would say more than twice a day is probably too much. I gotcha. would, I would even opt for, you know, once a day, you're probably good. Um, you know, two times a day, maybe again, depending on the industry and depending how much much engagement you're getting if you're right. getting a lot of engagement posting once a day and two times a day well don't stop <laughs> okay okay um but but again if, if you're getting some feedback from you know ask ask people that you trust ask you know friends colleagues 
um, you know, hey, what do you, what do you think about, you know, how much I'm, how often I'm posting? And okay. if they say, well, you could scale it back a bit, you know, do some testing, kind of see okay. if you get as much engagement, you know, if you, if you scale it back versus when you were posting more regularly. Okay, great, great. So what's, what's step five for us? I would say authenticity and vulnerability are everything. Yeah. Um, as you're working on all these other steps, this last step could be the hardest. Yeah. Um, get brave. Let people see your true, authentic, vulnerable self. Um, I read a lot of Brene Brown, by the way. Mm -hmm. Love Brene. <laughs> so, <laughs> vulnerability leads to connection. And so that's something that we've all desperately been needing and wanting yeah. during these last few weeks and months of social yeah. distancing. Um, taking risks, whether it's sharing a little bit more deeply okay. or making a shift and creating a new business offering. Okay. Um, these changes help a person grow, help a business grow and shift. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe fully that the more authentic you are with people, um, the more likely they are to advocate for you and your business in the future. So. Absolutely. And people can sniff out fake, right? They absolutely can. They can sniff yes. it out. We can, we can sniff out the fake. So authenticity <laughs> is great. And it is scary. It is scary putting yourself out there. This has been amazing. And I, I am going to shout to the rooftops what you've taught me today. In fact, we're probably going to talk about WordPress. I'm okay. <laughs> so unhappy about this. But I've heard this like the seventh time. So <laughs> it's probably time. So everybody that is still on, um, thank you for staying on with us. We are going to be opening up questions now. Um, let me say allow to talk. I'll listen to all those dings. I love having everybody on here. Yay, dings! Dings! <laughs> I love it. So many. So uh, if you would like to um, ask a question, whoever wants to, you, I believe I've unmuted everyone. So if you have questions, please share with us and our wonderful guest, Ashley. Or me. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Anybody at all? Anybody, anybody, and I believe you can raise your hand. I think you can raise your hand if you want to, or you can utilize the chat box. If you don't want to speak, you may use the chat box. That would be great. Jonathan says, ding, ding. What is a good ratio for content, personal versus business? That's a great question. 60, 40, 70, 30. Ooh, good question. I would say that's um, Good ratio for content, personal versus business. And you're talking about Jonathan, like you're on your, you would say like your own personal Facebook page. Um, so if that's the case, I would opt for a more, um, maybe 70, 30 approach. I, that's my personal preference. Um, you know, Facebook for me is more a, um, a personal channel. Like you guys are gonna see pictures of my children and my dog and things like that on, on Facebook. Um, but more so like, again, choosing your channel. If you're, if you're on LinkedIn, yeah. then I would say swap that probably, you know, 70, 30, 30, 70, you know, more, more business. And then, you know, let a little bit of yourself, let a bit of that authenticity show through on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Um, so it really just depends, I think on your channel and, um, you know, how comfortable you are, you know, sharing your own personal information. Yeah. So. That's a great question. And I wonder that too, because I have a Facebook business page and I have a hard time sharing, uh, all of my family because coming from a therapeutic background and now into coaching, I have boundaries that I've been taught by advisors and professors, and I've had to practice all over these years. So I have a very hard time, you know, transitioning into sharing too much personal, you know, but then sometimes I've gotten the feedback of Piper, you're not sharing enough. We want to see your silly pictures. We want to see your kids. I'm like, right. but I know that they're not always nice people online. Do I want you to see my kids? That's where my <laughs> mind goes. I just have a very hard time sharing, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard one. So, um, and Jonathan said more on the business page. So more, what would the, tr it be on the business page? So awesome. Awesome. Anybody else have any questions? We would love for you to ask them. Um, while we've got Ashley here. Now, what I will say to everybody that is joining us, let me 
send you this. Um, this is the wonderful workbook. You guys can grab this. And anybody that is watching us will continue to take questions if we have any. Uh, but we put together a great workbook. This is something that we want to do uh, through the Caring Through COVID series. Ashley and I worked really hard to give you something to help you thinking about your digital footprint, about digital marketing. Um, and also from a coaching perspective, you've got to nail down why you're doing this, what you're doing this for, uh, you know, those pain points, or you are going to really have a hard time launching. You've got to create those foundations. So Ashley and I are really excited to give you guys that today. So make sure you grab that. Um, any other questions? And then we're going to round in everything out for everybody. I'm not seeing anything. This has been so much fun, Ashley. I was so excited. And what's crazy is I, I stepped into my fear of going into your know, networking groups in person and forged a great friendship. And so I'm so grateful for you. And I'm, I really have to say, I am so grateful for this Caring Through COVID series, not only because we're feeding people in a time that is just so hard, but I have some pretty amazing women in my life. And, and I love sharing your story of breaking into business and what you're doing. And, and it's so empowering for other women that are going, I don't know if I can do it. And you we're can. telling them, yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> so, so thank you everybody. Uh, I do want Ashley, please tell everyone how they can get a hold of you, how they can work with you. So tell them about that. Okay. Um, you can pretty much find Atlanta SEO pro everywhere online where Atlanta SEO dot Pro, um, that's our URL, and uh, we are on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Google My Business. Um, if you want to go read the blog that I have <laughs> let go, uh, it's AshleyGraceless.com. You can go read that. That's more my my again my personal brand. Um, but uh, so that's you know been up there since 2007. Um, but that, those are most of my handles, um, Ashley Graceless or Ashley uh, G. Velez. Or, um, so you can, you can find us both there. Or when things start to open back up, you can yes. see us at the circuit. Um, Jonathan, I miss you. I miss, I miss the circuit. I miss Alma. Um, <laughs> So. It's hard. It's hard to be home. Well, this has been amazing. Everybody, please make sure that you check out Atlanta SEO Pro. Talk to Ashley um, and her business partner, James. Um, you guys can really, you need to digitally transform. I mean, we're seeing it. it this is a relevant top, topic, people. And what I would challenge everyone is don't think everything's going to go back to the same. In fact, lean into this crisis and transform your business. So when inevitably something else does happen, because that's just our world, you right. are ready. You're ready right. to go. You know, we're also going to have this great workout uh, workbook available on our individual website. So you all can go over there and check that out. Make sure you head over to my website, piperharris.net slash COVID. And that is where all those free resources are just trying to give to everybody. Uh, thank you again to everyone that's joined us today for this Lunch and Learn. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Ashley. Make sure you join me next week. Uh, I have a good friend of mine and nutrition and wellness expert. You don't want to miss Kim's story. Uh, she was actually in the AJC for her incredible story from obesity to anorexia to finding wellness uh, where she is. To, it's an ex I have goosebumps thinking about her story. So she is joining us next, next week, Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will, of course, make sure to post the link. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. We're going to say goodbye to everyone joining us right now. Have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to everyone very soon.